The monsoon group was a fleet of U-boats that operated in both the Indian and Pacific Oceans during the Second World War. It was a relatively small group of U-boats, but they lasted longer than most fleets, and the name stuck. The monsoon group operated out of Georgetown, the capital of Penang in what is today Malaysia. Interestingly, the Indian Ocean was the only theater of war in which the Axis powers of Germany and Japanese had forces in combat. Therefore, any attacks on other submarines were expressly prohibited by the navies of both countries, so as to avoid accidental sinking of what might be friendly subs. It was actually the Japanese who, in December 1942, first proposed having German submarines in the Indian Ocean. However, the Kriegsmarine was not interested, even though U-boats were quite active around South Africa's Cape of Good Hope by then, just a few hundred miles from the Indian Ocean. However, soon enough the Germans realized the value of being further afield in the Indian and Pacific Oceans, and so established a submarine base at a former British seaplane station on the west coast of the Malayan Peninsula. After that, a second base was established at Kobe in Japan, with smaller repair bases being set up at Singapore, Jakarta, and Surabaya. One needs to remember that Japan had conquered most of Southeast Asia by 1943. That included what was then known as the Dutch East Indies, and today is Indonesia. As such, all these submarine bases fell under Japanese jurisdiction. The Germans had another reason to have a U-boat fleet in the Indian Ocean. Their submarines were experiencing heavy losses in the North Atlantic by early 1943. Germany needed other spheres of influence for her remaining U-boats, and what better way to achieve that than by targeting Allied convoys and merchant ships in the Indian and Pacific Ocean regions. Established shipping trade routes used by the Allies were the primary objective of the Monsoon Group. Wilhelm Doms was the man ordered to assume command at Penang, which he did by sailing his U-boat, U-178, from its operating area off the coast of South Africa. He would be at the helm of a small, tight fleet of just 14 U-boats, which were dubbed the Gruppa Monsoon. It was so named because the launch of the Indian Ocean campaign would coincide with the region's monsoon season. Additionally, Germany seized a number of larger Italian cargo submarines when Italy surrendered to the Allies on September 8, 1943. The Italian subs would play a significant ancillary role to the Monsoon Group U-boats, although not to the story in this video. However, U-boats and Japanese subs alike were under constant attack, and attrition levels were very high. U-boats trying to reach Penang from Europe would first come under attack from bombers in the Bay of Biscay off France, followed by more attacks from above in the mid-Atlantic and around the southern coast of South Africa. Then, even after having survived those onslaughts from above, U-boats still ran the risk of being attacked by Allied submarines near Penang. To put that threat into perspective, only four of the 14 U-boats that were based in the Far East made it back home to Europe. The other 10 all sank somewhere in the waters off Asia. One of those was the submarine found in 2013 off the coast of Indonesia. That discovery is worthy of some attention now. The wreck of the U-boat was discovered by marine archaeologists on the seabed about 100 kilometers or just over 60 miles from Karimanjawa Island in the Java Sea. The entire discovery team was comprised of Indonesians, itself a source of great pride to the Indonesian government and archaeological community. The Indonesian crew had been tipped off by local divers in the area to the north of Java. The team of 16 experts was a joint undertaking by the National Archaeology Center, the Yogyakarta Archaeology Center, and the Yogyakarta Diving Center, which took place between the 4th and 17th of November 2013. In the words of Bambang Budi Udomo, head of the research team at the National Archaeology Center, this is the first time we have found a foreign submarine from the war in our waters. He added, this is an extraordinary find that will certainly provide useful information about what took place in the Java Sea during World War II. What they found was the wreck of a submarine which was ascertained as being a German U-boat. Relics found inside the wreck included batteries and dinner plates emblazoned with swastikas and binoculars. The remains of a torpedo and a telescope as well as shoes and cups were also found. There was even a bottle of hair oil found inside the wreck. The team estimated that as much as 40% of the submarine's hull was destroyed. Lastly, the wreck contained at least 17 skeletons. The aforementioned Bambang Budi Udomo ventured that it was unlikely the wreck would be lifted from the seabed in the foreseeable future. 
He believed the submarine was simply too large, and the sheer cost of it would be prohibitive. One could also imagine that being so damaged meant any salvage of the sub would possibly destroy it altogether. Udomo also confessed that the Indonesian project had run out of money anyway. What's so titillating about the wreck is that it's not entirely certain which U-boat it is. There are two likely candidates, since two U-boats are known to have sunk in that part of the Java Sea. Historians and amateur sleuths have grappled with which one it might be ever since the wreck was discovered in late 2013. That's more than 10 years of heavy speculation already. Quite a few researchers believe the wreck is that of U-168, a U-boat that was part of the Monsoon Group and which was eventually torpedoed by a Dutch submarine, HRM's Zwaardvish, while en route to Australia. Remember, Indonesia at that time was the Dutch East Indies, even though it had been annexed by Japan since 1941. Also, the Netherlands was under German occupation. Remnants of the Dutch colonial authority would have undoubtedly been on the side of the Allies in Southeast Asia, hence the Dutch submarine. The German newspaper Die Welt would report that the Dutch sub had fired six torpedoes from about 900 meters or just under 3,000 feet distance. However, only one of the torpedoes had detonated. 23 sailors on board U-168 had died with the explosion. Although the U-boat's captain, Captain Helmuth Pitch, and 26 other crew members had survived. The U-boat went down at 1.30 a.m. local time on October 6, 1944. When captured by the Dutch just after the sinking, Captain Pitch would inform the Dutch commander that he believed U-168 had been hit three times, even though only one torpedo had actually exploded. U-168 was a Type 9C-40 U-boat and boasted some fairly impressive credentials. She was quite large with a total length of 251 feet 10 inches, or 76.76 meters, and a width at her beam of 22 feet 6 inches or 6.86 meters. She stood at a height of 31 feet 6 inches or 9.6 meters. Due to her size, the sub had a displacement of 1,144 tons at the surface and 1,257 tons when submerged. For power, this U-boat used two MAN M9 Fi 4046 supercharged four-stroke, nine-cylinder diesel engines, which could be used when at surface, and two Siemens Schuckert, two GU-345-34 double-acting electric motors when submerged. She also made use of two 6-foot 3-inch or 1.83-meter propellers. If needed, she could dive to depths of up to 750 feet or 230 meters. In terms of speed, U-168 could attain a maximum surface speed of 18.3 knots, which equates to just under 34 kilometers, or a smidge over 21 miles per hour. Her maximum submerged speed was 7.3 knots, which is 13.5 kilometers or 8.4 miles per hour. As for range, she could travel up to 15,940 miles or 25,650 kilometers in distance at a constant 10 knots, or 19 kilometers or 12 miles per hour. Being able to attain those long distances at a good clip is what made a Type 9C-40 U-boat, like U-168, an ideal addition to the Monsoon Group. As for munitions, U-168 was fitted with six 21-inch torpedo tubes, four of which were fitted at the bow and two at the aft. She could carry up to 22 torpedoes on board. U-168 was also fitted with one 4.13-inch SKC-32 naval gun with 180 rounds, and a 1.5-inch SKC-30. She also had a .79-inch C-30 anti-aircraft gun on deck. U-168's build commenced on March 15, 1941, at the Deutsche Schifflin Maschinenbau AG shipyard in Bremen, and the U-boat was launched on March 5, 1942. U-168 first set sail on September 10, 1942, and would go on to have four patrols. To join the Monsoon Group, she set sail from her base at Lorient in German-occupied France in July 1943 and arrived intact at Penang in November of that same year. Her successful hits in the Indian Ocean included the SS Haiching, a British steam merchant ship which was sunk off Bombay, which is Mumbai today. This was followed by the sinking of the British salvage ship HMS Salvaking to the south of Sri Lanka, then known as Ceylon. 
That hit took place on February 14, 1944. The very next day, U-168 sank the Greek merchant ship Epaminondas C. Empiricos near the Maldives. Also near the Maldives and a week later the U-boat seriously damaged the Norwegian merchant vessel Fenris. It was six months later that U-168 was on her way to pick up munitions in Japanese-controlled Batavia, which is modern-day Jakarta, when she was fired on and sunk by the Dutch submarine. However, there was a second U-boat that went down in the Java Sea. That German sub sank six months after U-168 had gone down. She was U-183, and there are some publications that argued that it might have been U-183 that was the wreck discovered by the Indonesians in 2013. That theory was posited in late 2013 by the German daily, the Süddeutsche Zeitung, a theory that was also suggested by another respected German newspaper, Der Spiegel. Like U-168, the U-boat designated as U-183 was a Type 9C-40 submarine, with the exact same specifications as U-168, as already detailed in this video. She was built at the Dishimag AG Weiser shipyard in Bremen, being laid down on May 28, 1941, and launched on January 9, 1942. Commissioned on April 1st, she began her service in the 4th U-boat flotilla, which was used for training purposes. She then moved on to the 2nd and 33rd flotillas, both of which were actively involved in the Battle of the Atlantic. During this time, she sank two merchant ships, a 6,089-ton British vessel, the Empire Dabchik on December 3, 1942, and the 2,493-ton Olancho, a ship from Honduras on March 11, 1943. U-183 was then summoned to join the Monsoon Group, she sailed from her base in France in July 1943, arriving at Penang on October 27. She was one of the earliest additions to the Indian Ocean Fleet, where she operated for almost two years. During her six patrols with the Monsoon Group, U-183 successfully sank three merchant ships, all of them British. The first of these ships sunk was the Palma, which was hit by U-183 in the Lakadiv Sea to the south of Ceylon. The British ship had been making its way from Liverpool in England to Calcutta, India. That sinking took place on February 29, 1944. The second merchant ship sunk by a torpedo from U-183 was the British Loyalty, the largest of the three at 6,993 tons, and which went down on March 9, 1944, near the Adu Atoll in the Maldives. The Helen Moller was the third British merchant vessel sunk, which went down on June 5, 1944, this time 560 kilometers or 348 miles to the southeast of the Adu Atoll in the Maldives. U-183 was sunk in the Java Sea on April 23, 1945, by the American submarine Basugo, designation SS-321. Only one crew member of the 55 on board U-183 survived the American torpedo, even more tragically, the U-boat was hit a mere 15 days before Germany would surrender to the Allies. In closing, it's worth noting that the Indonesian team that found the U-boat wreck went to great lengths to not disclose the exact location of the wreck. They explained that this was done to prevent the wreck being looted by bounty divers. The wreck lies in a part of the world that is strewn with the wrecks of World War II vessels. Whether it's U-168, or U-183, perhaps it's best that she's left to lie at the bottom of the Java Sea. It can remain a testimony to German engineering and Indonesian respect for the souls of the men who went down with her.